So how many in here is actually used the Tech Insights plugin on the open source backstage? How many has deployed it? We have two hands. That's nice. So maybe a maybe few more after this talk. Um, so we're going to talk about Tech Insights a little bit. We'll uh, show why we built it for Rode, first of all, because we wanted to roll that out for our customers. What are the components that are now available in Rode and how you can implement those yourself in the open source backstage as well. Um, everyone will go through what we have currently in place and why we built it, and then I'll jump in and I will talk about what is in the open source backstage, how it was architected initially, and what are the ideas behind it, and then we'll go through what you can do to actually use that to your advantage in the open source project or your own backstage deployment. So maybe, maybe more than two people after this talk. Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Thanks, you see. Okay, so as you see mentioned, uh, I will be uh, first uh, kind of giving you a brief overview why we decided to develop Tech Insights and then follow examples of how do we use it. So let's first start by uh, yeah, telling you how it all started. So uh, when we first started using Backstage, everything was great. We didn't have a lot of serv services, of course. It was maybe around 10 services that we needed to check. So we were able to manually trace progress in all of these services. And we were able to kind of do all sorts of tasks and see if some of those services were successful and some of them were not. However, over the time, the number of our services increased. So we started having more than 100 services, more than 1,000. We didn't have million services, but you see my point. Uh, so we figured out that manually checking the things wasn't uh, easy cake anymore. So we were looking for an automated way to keep us happy because we figured out that we weren't as efficient as before, of course. And uh, we had a couple of main goals in our mind. So I will just guide you through them. So firstly, we wanted to measure the quality of software. Now, software quality may be a term that is not, I mean, it is a common, but the common understanding of this may not be the same for all software engineers. So uh, by introducing scorecards, we were able to uh, just kind of uh, reflect on those checks that matters to us the most. So for example, here you can see several checks, such as present and sneak, or number of critical severities, or if none of them are found. But basically, checks themselves are a single unit of computation, and they pr produce result based on that value. Now, scorecard result would be like uh, accumulation of all of those results. And whether you decide to use it on an entity level, as shown here, or catalog level, it is clear that by having this overview, it's easier for engineers to focus only on those services that are not meeting requirements set in scorecard so that they can improve accordingly. Okay, secondly, we wanted to visualize what matters the most. So we strongly believe in the power of visual components in order to provide better visualization. We kind of developed a graph card, which you can see here. And uh, this card uh, gives you and provides you the information about fact value over the time range. So here it's one month period, but of course it can be anything else what matters to you. But uh, apart from that, we have also developed a big number card. And the main difference is that the, this card will give you a current values for the facts. Now, both of these are quite handy and we use them because uh, like the biggest power they have is that you can combine multiple facts from multiple fact retrievers and display all of them in these cards. And lastly, but of course, not least important, we know that uh, in organizations, different teams will be working on a different parts of the platform. So by developing team level report, we have emphasized, emphasized the accountability for services within teams so that they know which services they own and what they need to do in order to increase the quality in those services and to meet the requirements set in the scorecards. 
However, since we know that we don't live in a world where all developers can jump in on the task as soon as it kind of pops up, currently we are working in a f on a feature that will provide real-time uh, feedback alerts and subtly nudge developers and teams in general so they know what they need to do in their services so the requirements are met. So these nudges can be whether on Slack or GitHub or whatever tool you use, but uh, these will be used like, as I said, kind of nudging the team in a subtle way so they know what they need to do. I have mentioned several terms in my part of presentation and those are checks, facts, and fact retrievers, so I'm sure that you'll wonder how they all fit into a place. So now I will let UC take over and he will tell you more about architecture behind Tech Insights and hopefully we'll have like a big, better idea how it all fits you into a place. Cool, thank you. So if we think about Tech Insights in general, it is a plugin that needs a lot of work because data sources that you're using to actually retrieve Tech Insights data is usually something custom. You can think about data sources being GitHub, or in our case, Sneak is a very good data source for us, but then you have sources like internal CI CD solutions where you want to pull the data in from, and those are usually very specific to the implementation detail. I'll, over the next few slides, I'll go through how you can actually do that with your own tech, uh, back, backstage implementation deployment, and what are the missing pieces that you need to actually implement to have that available for you. Um, yeah, when I think about tech insights, I usually think about three layers of that one. So we have data layer, which contains like the storage of the data, as well as the retrieval, how do we get the data into the storage base. Then we have calculation, which I usually divide into two different bits, um, checks and then manipulation, other aggregation stuff. And finally, visualization. We saw a few visualis visual elements here already that we have developed for Audi. And there are um, a component on the open source backstage as well that you can use to visualize your scorecards. So yeah, we'll go through these one by one. Now you will see some code as well. First, let's think about data. So if you think of backstage plugins, a lot of the implementations that we have seen they usually fetch the data from some third party source and then display that. So you'd have the current data available for you and that would be pretty much it. You fetch that at runtime and show that immediately. Um, there might be some cache that stores the data in the database, but that's uh, what we've come up or what we've seen. It's usually not that long lived. Tech Insights kind of flips that, flips that around because we want to build the tech insights to be also a metric and uh, analytic solution. So we want to have the possibility to do reporting and analysis on the data. And that way we can then store the data for longer periods of time into the tech insights database within Backstage. Um, how it's currently done, we have two different tables in there. The first table is called schema. The schema, this defines the shape of the data that you want to store in Tech Insights. So if you take a look at the JSON blob in there, or actually it's Java and TypeScript code, the schema itself, it actually has multiple fact items within it. So you have a fact schema that encompasses multiple fact items. And this can be considered that, okay, all of these fact items come from the same data source, whether it's SNCC or GitHub or your internal CI CD solution or something else. All of these fact items within the schema, they have a type. So currently the types available on the open source package, we have few numerical types, so integer and floats, and then strings and sets and timestamps. And in some cases, you might want to store like complex serializable objects like JSON blobs as facts as well. So when we have this fact data available, then we can work with that one. The second table that we have is then the fact itself. So this is a pure one-to-one -one mapping to the fact schema that we saw earlier. You can see on the last three lines, we have the same, same shape, but now we have the actual values in there as well. The two other kind of interesting bits in here are the timestamp. So all of this data that we are storing in the big tech insights database, 
his time series data. And that way we can run analytics or graph it out or whatever we want to do with it. And all of this data also has a hard reference to an entity. In this case, the reference is a component called sample service, but the reference can be anything else that you can think of. It can be a resource. You may want to do analytics on your AWS resources that you have mapped into backstage, or maybe you want to do analytics on your employees. You have a user entity, and you want to see how many lines of code they have committed over the last two weeks, and maybe do races based on that. No, don't do that. You can. It's possible to do, but don't do that. Um, the top field there, ID, that is then the last terminology that we'll introduce here. So fact retriever. In this case, we are calling it sneak fact retriever. Fact retriever itself, it, uh, it is a logical concept that encapsulates, encapsulates both the schema itself, we see that on line three, as well as the logic that we need to use to actually get the data from third party and map it into some kind of shape that we have defined in the scheme itself. These factor drivers that we have in Backstage, um, the shape of them is usually like this. You need to define a schema and create the handler function for it and then register it to have some kind of schedule for it so it can run on a loop, contact third parties, fetch data, store it in the Backstage big database. And the big database, the whole data model looks a little bit like this. So we have the factor drivers, the schemas for it, and then a big database uh, that stores all the facts. If you squint hard, you might see some similarities to star schema in there, but we are in very denormalized world, so it's not really, you need to squint like really hard to actually see that. Um, the database implementation in Backstage, currently it's using whatever you want to use. Uh, it is SQLite or Postgres but it is open to extension. So if you want to actually dump it into Cassandra or uh, a DynamoDB or anywhere else, you can bring your own because the API, API surface of these interfaces that implements these database uh, calls is fairly small. There's like five, six methods that you actually need to implement and it's just mostly dumping JSON into somewhere else or retrieving it. Cool, so that is uh, data layer. We are repeating the slides. Next one, we can talk about calculations. Um, now that we have the data available for us, we need to do something with the data. There are two categories of calculations that I've identified. The first one is something that was on the MVP that we wanted to make for the open source backstage. So we are purely talking about scorecards and scorecards are built based on checks. Checks are simple checks. So you, you have a target value, you have a fact value. In here, uh, fact is called severe vulnerabilities and target is one. And then you have an operator that can compare those two. So the default implementation in there is JSON rules engine that always produces a true or false value. This is by design, we want to produce true or false values uh, because that way we can then map those into, or we can roll those up into scorecards and see uh, that, okay, this scorecard has five checks, four of them succeed, and it gets a grade of 80% or whatever, 4, 4, 4, uh, four uh, out of five. Uh, we'll talk about checks, how to create those later a little bit more. Um, but first, let's talk about the other calculations. Um, the raw fact data is usually retrieved from a third party. So you contact your third party and pull party, map the data and dump it into the database. But you can actually create fact retrievers that use the already available fact data in the uh, Tech Insights database. You can query ranges of that and then run calculations, aggregations, uh, run arithmetics, calculate like uh, averages over time window or min max values or most common value or percentiles and stuff like that. And then store that back into the same Tech Insights database as a second layer of this fact data. That way, when you want to 
see that what was the average over one week period today, you can see that. But you can also go four weeks back and see what the, what the actual value was at that point. You don't need to do additional calculations. You can do additional calculations though, because all of these can be done in runtime also, because these calculations are usually fairly simple and you can implement these either at the router level or possibly even directly on the front end when you get the data. So those are the two layers or two, two flavors of calculations. Neither one of these is actually necessary. They are available there. So if you want to use checks, there are endpoints where you can dump in a check identifier and fact identifier, and it'll, it'll give you a result. Or if you want to do the aggregations or other, uh, other calculations with the fact data, you can just create the fact driver and dump it back into the database. But you don't have to do that because you can use the fact data directly from the database and visualize that. So, the last layer, visualization then. We saw a few of the elements that we have built for Odi. There are a few others that we have ideated. Currently, the implementations that are available on the open source backstage side are limited to scorecard implementation. So scorecard, we saw that or already, and as a concept, it is fairly simple. It is a full end-to-end -end solution that you can use nowadays already. So if you want to see how secure your service is. You can create checks that, uh, checks, okay, I have less than five vulnerabilities or uh, similar items like that, and then create the scorecard out of that one. Tie that to an entity, show that on the catalog page of your uh, entities, and teams will be able to see if they are getting a good grade or not. The next item is then using the fact data directly. So endpoints are available in there. We see, a talk about visualization in two hours, I think, which will be very interesting because I, I believe that uh, the Tech Insights database and the facts that are stored in there will be very good source of data for these visualizations that we will be seeing. Uh, and I think there will be a lot of, uh, a lot of good coming out of that one when we um, uh, combine these two talks together. So yeah, you can do ranges, you can do charts and whatnot. Also, aggregate visualization, it's, a, it's the same, same thing, of a, uh, same thing uh, using the fact data directly, but different kind of items to be displayed. So you can do pie charts, you can do, um, you can do average numbers or the big number card that we saw earlier. You can even create infographics based on the fact data that you have calculated for your tech insights. Um, all of these three, these are um, very tight to the catalog, right? So you usually display these ones that are tied to an entity. You'd see that on the catalog page and um, you would maybe create rollups. So we saw rollups of scorecards earlier, a team view of uh, scorecards, but mostly these are very tight to the catalog itself. The other bits that I called others simply, um, you can actually do more with the Tech Insights data that we have in the database. So if we think about the original demo video that is on Backstage IO slash demo, right? In there we saw migration from, I can't remember what it was, let's call it Python 2 to Python 3, and tracking that, how teams were faring, what was the score of the team, and how that migration was going or, uh, organization wide. You can do that with the Tech Insights database using the scorecards because what the scorecards or initiatives in this case would be is just the scorecard with the start date and an end date. The other bit that we saw in the demo video as well is to actually display the fact data directly in a pure format. So on the demo video we saw a table view that displayed some service what were the dependencies of that and what were the versions of the, those dependencies. So you can think about, okay, I want to map all of the dependencies of my Node.js microservice. What you do in there is you retrieve the fact data for the Docker file that used to deploy that, for example. You retrieve all the fact data from the package JSON file to see what the express version is. And then you can query the fact data and display that in a tabular format 
for the whole uh, organization or team, and then you can have an overview to see who is uh, early adapter or who is lagging behind and who needs to upgrade their versions or whatnot. So all of this is possible now. Um, but how do we actually do that then? Um, there are three steps that you need to implement. I said earlier that it is very code heavy to actually get tech insights up and running. A lot of backstage is because you do need to implement your own code, scaffold the uh, code dependencies up and wire things up. Maybe the backend system will help with that. I hope it will. It looks very good already. But back to tech insights, if we create tech insights, we want to create three different items. First one is fact retriever. You find out what your third party source is for the data, whether it is GitHub or Sneak or internal CI CD tool. Then you identify what is the shape of the data, so you create a fact schema for that. And finally, you create the actual logic, the simplest bit, make a call to third party, modify the data and dump it into the fact, uh, tech insights database. So now that we have the data insight, we can create checks. The functionality in here that is listed, it's very, very tight to scorecard. So this current implementation of Tech Insights, it enables you to create scorecards on your backstage implementation. And creating scorecards, you need to create checks. The default implementation currently is called JSON Rules Engine. And that was chosen because it is kind of powerful. It gives you easy tools to get started. So you can create easy checks like, okay, number two is less than my fact, which is simple to understand. But you can also do Boolean uh, logic in there. You can do and and or combinations on J JSON rules engine. Uh, and the kind of the most interesting bit that I think of when I think about JSON rules engine is that it has the ability to actually compare one fact uh, against another fact. So you can imagine an implementation where your DevSecOps team uh, maintains a Google Sheet where they uh, store values of, okay, log for j version needs to be higher than whatever the vulnerable version was. You can use that as your fact source, call the API of Google Sheets and store that as a fact. And then you can create the check that uh, compares that DevSecOps provided fact against the actual dependency version in your entity. That way you will have completely dynamic checks. You don't need to modify code anymore. You create the check once, and then you need to modify whatever Google Sheet or maybe another GitHub repository with file values and stuff like that. And finally, when we have these checks available for us, we can create scorecards based on those. So. There is a plugin to create scorecards. It is displaying these check results. It, make autom it makes automatic calls to the back end to check endpoints and gives us the values, displays what is the, um, what is the grade of the scorecard that we want to see. Cool, I think with those, you should be able to get started. So three items to think about, creating factor drivers, creating checks. Factor drivers are TypeScript code, checks are JSON structure, more or less. So you can create those outside, maybe store them in the database, because that way it might be easier to handle and you don't need to modify code. And finally, when you have those two available, you can start creating your scorecards. If you have checks for security, maybe you have static analysis checks that your code quality needs to be good enough, and then you can use those as scorecards and show how well your teams are faring or how well the entities are actually conforming to standards that you want to set. Um, yeah. Okay. I believe that's all what we have prepared for today. However, keep in mind that this project is still like in its early stage, so contributions are very welcomed. So here are a few ideas, how can you all get involved and uh, how can you contribute? But we hope that we have sparked the interest in Tech Insights plugin and that if you haven't so far, you will kind of try it out now. Unfortunately, we don't have any more time, but uh, we will be having, I think, time for a couple more, couple questions. So make sure to raise your hands. But if there are still, if there is like interest or you need to know something, 
make sure to stop by our booth. We will be here whole week, so both me and UC will be there most of the time, and we will be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there plans for it to be available, hosted on uh, Rudy? The, the platform? Tech Insights, yes, that is something that we are building currently on Rodi side. So we have we have automated tools to create these uh, factor drivers and checks through the UI already available for us. More questions? Yes. Uh, hey, how, how would you compare Tech Insights to something like Datadog, which also has the concept of like monitors and alerts um, based on you know, Kubernetes metrics? Uh, I so, notice you also have a, data, a Datadog plugin for Backstage. Yeah. Could you also use something like that for service health? Um, let me see if I understood the question correctly. So how it compares to like Kubernetes metrics or Datadog or something similar like that, yeah. Uh, tech Insights isn't, so if we think about those metrics in general, the cadence for those is usually much smaller. So you can talk about like minutes or whatnot. When you think about Tech Insights, it's usually creating checks or fact, retrieving facts that might take days to change. And visualizing those is something that, I mean, you can do in Kubernetes, for example, but actually having the historical data, what it was, 10 months ago is useful because you can see that, okay, over time our team uh, gained a scorecard from 20% to 93% or they, their severe vulnerabilities dropped from 80 to 3 over the last two month period or whatnot. So it's similar solution but mostly data source would be different and then because you have data sources from different third-party places, so you can have Datadog and the Kubernetes metrics in the same database. You can merge those together and maybe compare them or uh, create aggregations based on them. I hope that answered the question. Yeah. Good, and we thank you cool. for your session. Thank you.